DJ Jerry should say that. that. <laughs> Don Chapman and Will Barnes. Right, those are the ones that passed. Right. We're out. Right. So we're good. We got waiting on Adam. We got what we need up here. Or? See, it wasn't just me. She was just being polite, yeah, waiting until you got up here first. One more. Michael, you need yours. You got up yours over there. We got TVs. We got good. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, felt like uh, open date went really well. We had. Uh, Really good practices for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, with uh, zero week and two open dates, we've uh, handled it a little bit differently. We, we don't hit as much uh, during the open weekend. Uh, when you start looking at national stats, there's more injuries in preseason and open weekends than any other time during the year. So you have to be smart uh, because there's, uh, in some cases, they're not as excited about a game and they're tired. And, uh, you, you have to be careful with that, that focus uh, throughout the week. Um, so we had our guys watch the um, um, Georgia Tech-Virginia game and make notes, uh, scouting report notes. We had them do the same thing with Pitt and Louisville. And that's fun when you've got some uh, time off on a Saturday to watch everybody else play. And then your coaches can say, act like you're playing the game. And, and uh, write down these notes, answer these questions for me. What did you see and how would you have attacked that differently than, than maybe someone that was doing it during the game? Um, and they also see how crazy college football is. I'm starting to show them every Sunday uh, all of the scores and, and I'm asking them what their thoughts are, who's gonna win this game? Um, just like the Duke-Miami game, we played both, so it's fun for us to sit there and say, how many people think Duke's gonna win a game? How many people think Miami? And, and, and the guys are uh, learning more about college football just by, by watching it. Um, and then the, the other thing that uh, we talked about are the, the polls. It's fun to be ranked. Um, the guys haven't had a lot of attention this year. Um, a lot of people are talking about the coastal race a lot of people are talking about the conference championship game, and I told them, let's put all of that to bed on, um, on Sunday because the only ranking that matters is the one at the end of the year. The, it, the resumes start with the first college football playoff, and that's when people have some idea of where the, the experts think you should be rated. Uh, but really, truly, the ranking at the end of the year is the only one that matters because you're one loss away from being back out of it anyway. Um, the, the other thing is, why well, talk about the Coastal until you win it? You, you've got to earn your right, and we've got a five-game season, and we've got a, a, a very difficult five games. So we, we shouldn't be thinking about anything except Pitt. We've, we've had uh, two great games with Pitt uh, up there. Uh, both of them came down to overtime, and we lost both of them. So um, they've been tougher than we have. They made the plays at the end of the game that we haven't. Coach Narduzzi does a tremendous job. Uh, they're um, ninth nationally and first in the ACC in time of possession, and that's how Notre Dame beat us, is they just kept the ball, and I'm sure that, that'll be the pit plan. Pat loves to run the ball and be physical. They've got the best running back in the country. He's leading the nation in rushing. Um, and then they've got one of the best defenses in our league, third best, I think, in, in the league, and uh, they're only giving up 33% on third downs, and we've done a very poor job offensively against them for the last two games on third down uh, and in uh, red zone offense. We've only scored two touchdowns against that defense in our two games. So um, got our hands full. Um, th this should come down to a another really, really tight game. Glad we're at home. Um, National TV game, sell out. Should be a lot of great recruits here, uh, but excited about the weekend. Questions? Is there anyone who's gotten every single game correct for the predictions that you uh, asked them? <laughs> no. No, it's fun to watch them because it, what, what it does for me after I say, okay, let's pick Virginia, Georgia Tech. How many think Virginia and why? How many think Georgia Tech and why? And then on Sunday, I come in and say, 
you guys had no clue. And, and what it shows them is you got to play. Nobody really knows. All these games are coming down to the end. They're really close, and, and that's, just, that's just the way college football's become. There's more parity than ever before. What it, it helps um, is to tell them that you've got to play every week. And, and we, what we talked about back in the spring is that you've got to practice to a standard of excellence and you've got to play to a standard of excellence every week. And I've told them some teams don't play well. Some teams turn the ball over. And, and I give them stats of what happened during the game and why. And, and I'm just trying to show them that don't, don't sit here and say, we're better than this team. It doesn't matter. It's who's best that day. And, and, and it's more that way right now, Andrew, than I've ever seen it. It is definitely the team that plays the best on that day. Is that sort of a mission behind having them do that so they understand? Absolutely. I, I want them to understand that we're, we're not the only ones that have emotions. We're all human beings. Um, there's injuries with everybody. People are tired. I've talked to the guys that, that want to be in the NFL. I said, okay, we've played seven games. NFL plays 24 if you go to the end. So you're tired. You're banged up. You want to be an NFL guy? You're a third of the way through the season, man. So wake up. Wake up. Yeah, absolutely. We've gotten everybody's best shot all year. And I've told the team, good for you. That's a compliment to us, and uh, that's just why you don't have to wonder about who's going to come in. Mike, you mentioned multiple lines. <coughs> How do you weigh keeping the middle of the room, specifically on offense, and then making corrections, getting help and all that, with this sort of disjointed Tommy, I, I, I should have mentioned it. I even think I wrote it down here. But after the first three weeks, we, we divide the season up into three segments. After the first three weeks, we had total self-evaluation and being really hard on us of what, what have we done well, but what do we need to fix? And how do you fix it? Coach Bowden always said, don't keep practicing bad stuff. If it's not working, change it. And, and it's, it's very simplistic, but it's so true. And John Lilly worked for him, and he said he really meant that. Every day he'd say, this is bad, fix it. Don't keep doing the same stuff. So we, we had a, a harsh uh, conversations all week again about where are we improving and why. Uh, why haven't we scored touchdowns against Pitt? We, we've given up too many sacks against Pitt. Um, I, I mean, multiple sacks both games. They're a blitzing team. They're really good up front. But what do we do to change that? Well, let's don't have the same problems we, we've, we've got. Uh, so you, you look forward with your five games um, and, and get some of your young staff to, to start doing more game plan stuff to catch up. You, you have a harsh evaluation of who you are uh, in self-study and, and, and try to break tendencies in this game because you've started to get some. Um, and then you go back and study the two games with Pitt because it's the same defensive coordinator. It's not the same offensive coordinator. And, and look and see why we haven't done well against them at times. So it's a very healthy and mentally and physically we told them to rest. You know, these are kids, and they're going to be out, and they're going to have fun. And, and we've said, uh, eat, sleep, um, and rest to win. And, and that was their message for the weekend. Be safe. A lot of them went home. A lot of them go to their high school games. But you, you don't just, it's not just a weekend off. To be really good, you've got to sleep. You've got to eat right. You've worked so hard to get to this point. Don't mess it up over the weekend. They were all back on time, and they're, so they're, they're doing good. This has been a, a really fun team to coach. We've got a lot of things to fix, but they are trying so hard, and I like them. Nice. This is a bit tongue in cheek, but um, who opens things up more, Antoine Green or Josh Downs or Josh Downs or Antoine Green? That's a great question, CL. I, I would think probably... Antoine Green because we didn't have the other guy last year. It was all about Josh, and we did really well till about midseason, 
and we kept Josh in the slot, so everybody just double teamed Josh. And it changed who we were at, at the end of the year. Now we're, we've gotten smarter, we're moving Josh around, so he's playing all three spots. And, and Antoine, you, you've got you to make sure if you're going to cover him with one guy, uh, that's a load right now because he's playing as well as anybody in the country. Uh, so I'm really, really proud of him. He, he, uh, I told him the other day for a guy who's had some injury issues and, and, and didn't get back on the field, here's a guy that has a broken collarbone. Um, he could have quit. He could have gotten frustrated. Senior year, going to be a pro guy. Uh, and they say six to ten weeks, and I'm thinking, eh, let, let's go eight to ten. Uh, and he plays against Notre Dame and plays really well in six. So he's, um, he's, he's tough, he's matured, he's smart, uh, and he's uh, one of the most valuable players on our team. Pitt's quarterback doesn't do a whole lot of running compared to guys we've seen in recent weeks. How much is that going to open up the game plan for you guys and make it a little easier on focusing on what you need to do right on defense. When you've got running backs like they do, you don't need your quarterback running. Those guys are really good. So, and, and that's Pitt's offense. You know, Kenny Pickett ran some, but most of it was not by design. It was scramble. Um, and and Slovak can do the same stuff. You've, I mean, you've told us, you've talked at length about rankings and, and the team last year, maybe not as already be ranked so high to start the season. And- 100%. It'd be better to, to rank them in November when uh, football, you know, we've heard you say that, but like, your team has yet to play with a national ranking. and you got it in the bowl when you're all the week. How do you expect them to play with that number beside their name, or and are you wary of that at all since they haven't had that yeah. designation yet? I'm not. We, we were ranked fifth, I think, our first, uh, the COVID year, and went to Florida State and lost. And we weren't fifth, and half the, a third of the teams weren't even playing. Two conferences weren't playing. Uh, then last year, we were way overranked in preseason, losing 4,200 yards of offense. Um, so I think what they've done, Adam, has learned from um, it, it matters what you do when you're ranked more than getting ranked. Um, so we're, we're, we're one loss away from not being mentioned again for the year. So. I've told them enjoy it Sunday, enjoy it today, and then move on, man. It 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 matters absolutely not. Fans like it; they can talk about it. Uh, recruits like it; they can talk about it. But outside of this building, uh, none of that matters. None of the talk about conference race, uh, conference championship game, or uh, polls matter at all. And I felt like that this team is more mature. Uh, than some we've had, for, even for a lot of young guys. And I felt like they responded to it. I said, you're 21st, and, and they went, hey, that's good, man. Uh, and then, like said, Gray said, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Let's go back to work. Come on. So they're, I, I, I do think they're maturing. I don't think it will make any difference to them. He, he does. He, he's kind of a combination of both. He's so thick. And he's, he's really hard to tackle. I remember when we were in the Rose Bowl, we played Mike Hart at, uh, at Michigan. And, and Mike was that way. They're, they're smaller and stocky, but so fast and quick. And he's got really good patience. And he just breaks so many tackles. And when he breaks a tackle, he goes for explosive plays. 320 yards rushing in one game. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's, you, just, you don't do that unless you're really good. And, and we rushed for 190 or something against Virginia Tech, our whole team. So uh, I'm, I'm impressed. I, I like what I see. Uh, he, he's got some natron means to him. Um, so he's, he's just uh, – he, he is so impressive. And, and when you go into a game, you got a guy that, you, you, that gets your attention, that changes games, and he's that guy uh, for them. They've got an older offensive line. Uh, they're, they're very physical, obviously. Um, I think Pat would rather run it every time and get the game over with in about an hour and a half. That would be his, his mentality, and I understand. I was raised like him in, in the old days. So, uh, but but I'm, I'm very impressed with that young man. And have you emphasized to you guys more than usual the importance of you know, making tackles first contact with him? Or is it just, you know, the same? Only every day since the first day of spring practice. So... And some of them aren't listening. We, we've, it's, 
funny, we haven't stopped the run as well as we need to. We haven't tackled as well as we need to. And those are two things that we have to do this weekend to have a chance to win. On that note, um, how is the tomorrow adjustment to being without Ray? I haven't been down for a couple weeks, but I knew you were seeing it from that group in terms of people setting up. Yeah, Ross, it's a good question. He was the leader. He was the guy. And he stirred him up, and they had fun with him. Now, he's been out there every day, and he hasn't missed a practice, and he hasn't missed a meeting, and, and so he's, he's been like the British Brooks and, and the Antoine Greens. They're, they're really staying involved with the team. I think he has his operation Wednesday, so we'll miss him for the game this weekend. Uh, but he, he is, like British, he stayed really active and involved. Uh, and I'm sure he'll he'll be in touch with them this weekend. But it, uh, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him on the field because he plays so hard. Yeah, yeah. Can we, can we see you guys step up kind of to a leadership role in his place or advice of performance? You, uh, uh, Miles Murphy's getting well. Uh, Javari Ritz, he's a, I mean, he's a special guy, and he plays hard all the time. He's a great leader. Uh, and we're we're also seeing Kevin Hester play better. So he's really stepped up. And Travis Shaw's getting healthy, so he's playing more. And, and one of the question marks this weekend, because they're going to be so physical and run the ball so much, is how much does Kendrick Binkley-Jones and, and um, Keyshawn Silver play as, as well, because we're going to need them. Well, you don't want to talk about Coastal Division, the rankings, everything, but before the season starts, do you have – Outline with the team any stated goals and you know state champs at least one of them. But is is winning the coastal division among those? If, if you do that, yes, we've always said win the first game. We've always said win all the games in your state because that's what your neighbors, your your alums don't want their neighbors to beat them. Uh, we've always said win the coastal, win the conference championship, and 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 then win your last game of the season. You you like to say it's a national championship, but. You could win all your games and not get in the national championship. So we've always changed that to win your last game because that puts it in a bowl game or um, your, your national championship game. Pitt scored the majority of their points in the first and the last quarter of the game. How important is it going to be for Drake May and this offense to score and take advantage in that second and third period or quarter? Excuse me. Well, it's always really important. I've always overemphasized probably the last five minutes of the half and the first five minutes of the second half. Uh, in watching uh, who scores first uh, is, has an advantage. Pitt scored first against us the last two games we've played them. Uh, whoever's leading at halftime has an advantage. Pitt has led at halftime in both of those games. In fact, uh, last year it was 23-7. to seven. Uh, And our kids have come back and fought. Uh, we're first in goal from the two last year with a minute 16 left in the game and don't win. So uh, I, I think that just makes this... Uh, uh, an exciting matchup because these teams have been very, very similar for the last two two games. Your offense has had a lot of success throwing the ball down the field in various distances. How much of that is the tight ends and how much of that is just Drake's vision? And if it is Drake's vision, how would you kind of gauge some of the better quarterbacks you've had with respect to vision and seeing stuff? I think it's both. He's tall, he can see, he throws to so many different receivers, he's got the quick release. Uh, he can throw on the run. Um, our tight ends are more involved with our offense than ever before, and that's really helped us. Uh, CL, I think that's another reason our tight ends have taken some pressure off Josh, too, because we weren't throwing to them as much uh, in our past. So now you've got um, J.J. Jones as a factor. You've got um, Antoine Green as a factor, but the tight ends are a, a huge factor in what we're doing now, and I, I do think – they're also the reason we're scoring more touchdowns instead of just field goals in the red zone because we're running it better and we're, we're throwing to the tight ends. Uh, but, but all of those, I think, are a factor, Andrew. And he's, he, he's as good at, at finding the second and the third receiver as, as I've ever seen. You've, you've got to uh, do a really good job of factoring that against the pressure that Pitts puts on because you have to get the ball out of your hands. And, and we've had too many sacks in these previous two games. With that end, it breaks a really run. How much does that stress linebackers? It, it really stresses linebackers because just like the last play of the Duke game, Gene Chiswick did a smart thing, and we had Noah Taylor spying their quarterback. 
And when the ball was thrown, Noah was tall enough he could jump up and bat the ball for the interception. Uh, but you're not going to stop the quarterback runs on scrambles in most cases un unless you shadow him with somebody uh, and that takes away from your defense. You're taking a guy for him because he's the extra player and, and you try to run games up front with X stunts and um, tight end tackle stunts and, and to change the quarterback draw and knock up the scramble and, and get the running zones. But these really good runners have a, a way of just sliding and, and getting through and then linebackers are dropping. If it's man coverage, everybody could be gone and you can run for 20 yards. So um, it, it's really, really important that you've got a quarterback in modern day football that can make some plays with his feet. It changes everything you do defensively. You mentioned several times how much the pit loss last year bothered you and stuck with you after the fact. Have you gotten a sense from the guys, the veterans that were there last season, that they took that loss personally as well? They were bothered in the same way. Michael, we try not to talk a lot about the, the upcoming game until we get to it. And last week, I didn't want them playing pit last Tuesday. Uh, I wanted to in, in enjoy beating Duke because that was important. That's a, a huge game for us. Um, so we haven't talked a lot about Pitt yet. We worked on Pitt last week. Uh, but we'll, we'll build into the game plan uh, and the motivational part uh, as we grow this week. And that, that, uh, that sequence at the end, the, the sequence at the first will, will be brought up because they just jumped all over us. Us coming back will be a great positive, but you've got to win the game when you're first in goal from the uh, from the two. And then um, I think Cam Kelly dropped an interception right at the end of the game. So we had opportunities. We just didn't finish. And this team is finishing better than last year's team. Um, and I, I do think that we've got to play well, but this we, we've got to plan on this being another close game. This team obviously has higher aspirations than just a regular bowl game. but being already bowl eligible, does that take the pressure off? Do the kids feel like a, something's been taken off their shoulder at all, even though there's something more they want to get? I don't feel like it takes pressure off of them because their expectation is to win a lot more than six games every year. Uh, I think it's, it's a pride factor that they've already won as many as they did last year when they played 13 games. Uh, but I do feel like that uh, um, it, it gives them more motivation uh, because now you, you've, you've reached one of those goals, and that's to have an extra game, and now you're trying to see how high that level can go from this point to the end. Mark, you, I mean, you know, the bye weeks obviously are a chance to reset, I guess. And, uh, you hit the first bye week, which you played three games, and with Drake, I, I'm asking about Drake, you know, it seemed like after those first three games, everybody was kind of like, wow, this guy's pretty dang good. Uh, but now you know you play some more, and you're here with the last five games. Like, have you have you reset your expectations at all for Drake this last week or so? As you've had a chance to reflect on what he's done through the first seven games, I mean, have you said, okay, I have to look at him in these terms here during the stretch run. We we haven't done it with him as much as your quarterback controls who you are offensively, and and we're throwing the ball better right now than we're running it. So we've always been, we've tried to be so balanced. Um, and, and right now, if you're throwing it better than running it, you, you need to do what you do best. So we're, we're looking at who we are and we're looking at the personality of our offense and, and what gives us the best chance to win the next five games. And, and um, so we've been a little bit more of a, a throw first, run second team. We've been a little bit more of a throw to the backs to get them more yards uh, than just rushing yards with some flares and screens and, and, and even the draws. Um, so the offensive staff is, is doing a really good job of figuring out who this team is and making adjustments. And, and that's hard to do because sometimes you, you, you want to be this team and if you're not, you, you're stubborn and you force yourself to be it. And, and I like what we're doing. As, as much as I'd like to be like Pat and run the ball and be physical all the time, uh, we've got to be us, and, and we, we've got to be the, the best um, the, the best team that we can be within who we are. And with Drake, right now he's playing as, at a, as high a level as anybody in the country, 
Uh, so we, we've got to make sure that we, we use his, his skills and his benefits to, to uh, be the best offense we can be. Yes, it, it's been interesting, um, CL, at, at the um, fault of sounding like it's an excuse. A lot of people have done different things against us in the first half than they've done all season. And it's just been new and different. Now, we've seen a lot of new coaches. We, we've seen some people that have a week off before we play them. Um, so, and, and some people trying to figure out who they are offensively. Um, so, I think that been a reason people have jumped on us quickly. The coaches have done an outstanding job of adjusting and then we haven't always played as well in the fourth quarter, but um, one of the pleasing stats is we're giving up 23 points per game in the ACC. Um, and we obviously gave up a lot more than that in, in a couple of the out-of-conference games. So I do see us getting better on defense, even though we've, we've still got a long way to go. Mac, have you spent the uh, I did not get off the couch. <laughs> I watched every game. I was flipping back and forth. In fact, it's a little embarrassing when you, you get an Apple Watch and it, it talks to you. And I don't like it all the time. But when it says, uh, you're off to a slow start, I said, I got it. It's going to be a slow day. And then when it says, you need to stand up, you haven't stood up for a while. And then embarrassingly, at the, at the end of the day, Sally said, uh, um, how many steps did you take today? Because, like Andrew, I've been working on the 10,000 steps a day, and I looked at it, and it had 243. And she said, that's impossible. You haven't taken 243 steps. So uh, she brought food to me. Uh, I sat on the couch. I got up to use the bathroom a few times. And other than that, I did not miss a snap of college football. I, I love it. I love watching those games, and it really helps me because I test myself. What would you do here? You're, you're watching the Texas-Oklahoma State game, and there's 35, 25, 35 mile an hour wind. Do you defer and take the wind? That happened to us against Coach Osborne when I was at Iowa State. There's 35 mile an hour winds. Here's Coach Osborne. He, he takes the wind instead of the ball, and I said, how dumb is that? And here's a Hall of Fame coach that I'm calling dumb when I was probably 30. Um, we were down 17 nothing at the end of the first quarter because <laughs> they were three and out in a short punt. Three and out in a short punt. So it, it makes you think about, do you take the wind instead of the ball? If it's a really windy game, and we don't have that much wind here, um, and you did in the Big 12, or do you take the, the wind the third quarter in, instead of the fourth quarter because the later the, the day goes, the more the wind lays down. So. There's just things like that that come up all, all over the place all the time. Um, uh, looking at, at the, the analytics of other coaches. When do they go for fourth down? When do they not? Who really believes in, in being aggressive and taking risk and who doesn't? Um, seeing how think games change, the Miami game, eight turnovers. Uh, talking to our guys about that Sunday. Um, you gotta protect the ball. We say it every day, but it's real and it's facts. Um, so uh, I, I love watching those games, and it really tests me, and I test myself because I'm trying to be both head coaches during the game and looking at the things I would do or adjust and, and, and see why. Clock management's always one that, that's uh, it's critical and it's tough. And when do you use your timeouts? And, and if you got under three minutes, you start using those timeouts to save them if they may score and you got to get the ball back. Uh, so I, I, it's a it's a great reminder and test for me every Saturday when I get to watch games. What's the food situation look like for you on the couch? The food situation. Uh, Sally's Italian, and one of the reasons I'm too big is she feeds me really well, <laughs> and I like to eat. So it's a, both those are problems. <laughs> you got in trouble for that last spot, Mac. Remember she was getting on you about your steps and all that. She was. She does understand that my Saturday of open date is going to be starting with game day. Uh, until I go to bed at midnight, and I'm going to watch every possible game I can. And I get one I'm watching and one I go to during commercials. So that, that's, what I, that's what I get. And I usually have about three I go to 
Um, and I keep my phone to see scores so I can go to the ones that are the closest. Um, I've got a lot of friends that I, I pull for, so I want to see them. Uh, so it's just it's, it's uh, one of the joys in my life is Saturday of college football when, I'm, when we're not coaching. Do you always watch it as a coach? Or do you sometimes just find yourself watching it as a fan of the sport and the spectacle that's coming? No, I've never been a fan. I've always been a coach. So I, it's a good question. I hadn't thought about it, Andrew, but I watch every play as a coach, and it really helps me. That, that's what um, – uh, that, even when I'm watching our opponents, I do the same thing to see who they are. And who, are they going to fake kicks? Do they have a history of faking kicks? Do they have a history of going for fourth downs? So you, you just, you've got to get into the mind of the other coach and, and try to figure out what he's thinking – as well, but it, it's, uh, it's fun for me to watch, and I try to watch our level of, of uh, uh, ability, athletic ability, as compared to the other teams uh, that are playing. I try to watch the top ten teams and see why they're so good. Uh, I try to watch. Uh, uh, I watch Virginia, Georgia Tech on Saturday night because we play both of them in the next. I mean, on Thursday night because we play both of them the next five weeks. Um, Sally, they're talking about your meals for me. Um, yeah, I'll leave. Um, so I, I, I watched uh, Louisville Pitt Saturday night. That was my, my total focus, uh, just to watch every play. Um, and, and I'll do the same this week. I mean, I'll pick out the games that matter in, in my life uh, with this job, uh, and I'll, that's, that's what I'll do. Outside of Pitt, I'll be looking at other, other people and, and what they're doing and how they're doing it. I did. At, uh, uh, Syracuse has played really, really well, and, and they're playing great defense. I think they're, I think Clemson's first in total defense, and they're second in the league. And I wanted to see why. And they've got a great running back. They got a great quarterback. He's a big guy that can run. Um, and they had a, they had a chance on the road. I think Clemson's won what thirty something ACC games at home, and Syracuse has been the ones that have had a chance to win two or three times there. When you're watching games like Georgia Tech and Virginia as a coach, watching as a fan, that's like one of the worst football games all year. How do, how do you see that? Do you, how do you prepare for a team that you know you guys have got to play and they don't look very good when they're on? How do you sort of take that apart outside of the fan? Tommy, fans usually take all the negatives. It's a, another good question. I think what I do is look at all the positives. Georgia Tech played really good defense. Virginia's playing fourth or fifth best defense in the, in the league. So you, you start looking at it. I know Armstrong is a great quarterback. I saw him throw for 500 yards against us last year. I know Sims is a great quarterback. When he got hurt, I thought, ooh, this is a, a big change in this game because he's, he's just uh, – he can run and pass, and he started the game well. Um, and, and then Georgia Tech had more momentum – than Virginia. So on the road, we've had trouble in Atlanta. So it was fun for me to watch all of it, but Virginia found a way to win. And Virginia is very talented. And, and when Virginia puts it all together, and we've got them next week at, up at Charlottesville, where we haven't played very well. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm looking at. I'm always looking at how will we do against them, and why, and what do we need to change, and where are they good, and what are they doing, and um, why are they playing good defense? They hired a guy from Air Force that, that we respect, and he's a really good defensive coordinator. Um, so it, it's just that I, I don't look at it as a fan at all. I look at it totally as um, sitting there, how are we going to look against this team and what are their strengths? And for us, like Pitt's strength right now has been our concern. So that really worries me for, for time of possession. I mean, it's just it's there, it's real. So we, we've got to do a better job tackling and, and stopping the run. Um, but it, it is something that I, I do, even to a point that I make everybody better than they are. Sally's always said that. I'll be sitting there, and if there's something, I'll say, God, look at that, man. They're really good. And she said, it's not real. You're making it up. Don't, don't get yourself in a bind here eight weeks before you play them. Uh, but that's just, that's just kind of who you are. You were 96 out or 60? 
Am I a 93 guy or a 63, 61 guy? Uh, probably somewhere in between. I can handle 45, 32, 35. 9, 6 to me is a little boring. Uh, I, I guess I had a lot of years in the Big 12. And, and 63, 61 is really bad defense. Back, uh, back to reality, sorry. Um, it, yeah, that's not much fun. I mean, I, I mean, asked you about Dino Babers, not using timeouts, but um, I wanted to ask about George Pedele. And, you know, a couple weeks ago when you guys decided you're going to sort of peer down the running back rotation, focus on two guys, did you give consideration to registering him? And, I mean, was that a tough call? It seems like you might have been close on that. I don't know. Like, what is, what's the conversation like with that? And, I mean, he's played five games now, so I guess that's out the window, obviously. Yeah. Um, we don't talk about redshirting anybody that can help us win a game. We think George is really good. Our running back room, I think Ross asked me, asked me the first of the year and then maybe even last week about being settled at running back. We're still not settled because George is in the mix and he's really talented and I wish we'd been able to get him in more. Uh, DJ got hurt, so then you, you had to figure out what to do and Caleb was playing so good. Uh, and he's played so well, and then he gets banged up. Um, so we're uh, – and, and then uh, the other night, uh, Larry decided to put Elijah in, and he looks great. So um, – and, and we, we sat down with every player last week. Every coach sat down with every player on the team and asked them, are you going to go to the NFL? If you're going to go to the NFL, is it first three rounds or is it, are you going to go for your fourth round or fifth round? Whatever your projection is. They ask every player, um, are you, you're going to graduate, are you going to leave? Uh, you're not playing as much as you'd want to. I, I got it. And we're, we've got to play the guys that we feel like needs to win. Are you going to leave? If they're an undergraduate, are you thinking about transferring? And, and what, what will it take to keep you here as compared to transferring? Because we've got to understand roster management. You're, you're looking at the number of recruits you have. You're looking at who leaves, and you're still dealing with the COVID year because it hadn't aged out yet. And you're looking at the possibility of transfer portal. The three graduate transfers have all really helped us from last year, two of them starting in the offensive line. Um, and, and, and George is happy. He'd like to play more. And we've told him, just keep working on your pass protection and uh, – Keep doing all the things that, that you need to improve. And, and we, we think he's really, really good. And um, he's one of the few on the team that we haven't been able to get in as much as we like. And, and he has a great future. So I hope we can do better there. You guys good? All good. Good? Thank you, Coach. All right. I will see you folks on Wednesday. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ooh.